Hey guys, it's Bree. I hope you're having a fantastic reading week. It's Thursday here, which means I probably should be filming my Friday reads. I'll probably do that after this, but first I wanted to talk to you about The Core of the Sun by Johanna Sinisalo. Uh, Johanna Sinisalo is a Finnish author. She was actually the guest of honor at this year's Worldcon, and I had never really heard of her before going to Finland. Uh, when I was there, I talked to a bunch of different people, but particularly Raya, who suggested a couple of different Santa Solo books. The first was Troll a Love Story, which I finished last week, and the second one is this one, The Core of the Sun. This is fascinating and terrifying and just perfect if you love anything about, like, Atwood. Gosh, where do I even start? <laughs> the story is about a woman Vera, who is living in this kind of alternate dystopian Finland. Basically, women have been bred specifically to have really juvenile and overtly feminine traits, right? So big breasted, small round face, super innocent. They are kept away from any kind of substantial education with the idea that this is going to make society more sustainable in the long run. At the same time, the Finnish government has kind of cracked down on anything that could possibly be like creating vice. So there's no alcohol, no drugs, no, uh, no tobacco, none of it. And one of the things that's included in this for some mysterious reasons are chilies. Vera, our main character, is what's known as an Eloy. An Eloy is the... <laughs> aside from being a, like an homage to H.G. Wells, is the class of women who are most suitable for breeding. Again, big breasted, big butts, long curly blonde hair. But realistically, when you realize that you're talking to her and she's as intelligent and curious and driven to do whatever it is she feels like, it turns out that she's really what they call a Morlock. Again, not to H.G. Wells. These are the women who society depends upon not to breed, but to kind of make all of the things work, right? They do manual labor, they staff all of the hospitals and do all of the, all of the actual substantive work. Um, but they are not allowed to breed because they are kind of too independently driven. And Vera is hooked on, uh, hooked on chilies. Basically, the idea behind that is that the pain is a kind of self-medication for a lot of people in the society. And so in her quest to get the next big high, to stave off some depression surrounding some really terrible things that have happened, Vera will seek out these highly illegal chili peppers. And she does this with the help of her not-boyfriend, Jer. I say not-boyfriend because it's pretty clear that he's interested. Um, but is not pushing her kind of deal, right? They just kind of constantly wound up thrown together and we kind of figure where it's gonna go probably. In the course of kind of trying to survive and trying to escape, Jair has become a chili dealer, pusher. He sells chilies and Vera is dependent upon him for her next fix, but also emotionally. He has a lot of ties to her family. They met when they were very young. And Vera sees him as the one thing she can never give her truly Eloy little sister. It's a complicated relationship. And holy shit, this is a creepy as fuck book. One of the things I really like about what Sinisalo does in this book is that she doesn't just show the experience of Vera and Jer, she shows through these kind of documents and social exposés and like newspaper clippings how Finnish society was supposed to have gotten from something fairly modern, right? I mean, we're starting in the 1940s, so not overly modern, but fairly modern and on a modern trajectory, to a society where they think it's okay to uh, sterilize women against their will and to breed people to have specific traits, right? This truly eugenic, very Machiavellian, uh, very regressive society. 
On the back, it asks, how does Finland become the North Korea of Europe? And you definitely get that feel. But what's really creepy about it is some of the text and some of the justification that she's saying people would use are the same kind of rhetoric that you hear nowadays. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my phone because I took a picture of a quote that I really, really liked that I think sums up the real realistic creepy aspect. In this particular scene, Vera is talking to a kind of rebel leader of a sorts, a guy who's not quite running a cult that's directly going against the government. And he's explaining how Finland got this way. He says, they didn't need the support of the majority. Sometimes all that's needed is a group of people loud enough and influential enough to change the world and make it the way they want it to be. It doesn't even have to be a huge group. As long as some of them establish their own personal preferences as the only real truth and make enough noise to give the, the impression that the forgotten neglected masses are behind them. Everything about this book and the justifications that Sinisalo has for the society's transition creeps the hell out of me. Because if you look at the way American society and society in, as a, like a Western society as a whole is dealing with a lot of the backlash of the economic crisis, it sounds a lot like this. Um, it's just super, super creepy and makes me real not happy. <laughs> a lot of the other things that she talks about are things like this idea that women have a specific place kind of evolutionarily and that the sexual revolution disrupted that entire balance and made women not only less attractive, but less willing or able to provide that stability in our society. And so men are entitled to having partners that women who are resisting that are actually going against the good of humanity and that they ought to be punished or kind of just doled out to these guys who otherwise would not have partners. That also really creeps the shit out of me because I have heard that exact rhetoric used by a lot of men's rights activists. It's just like bone chilling. On top of that, I really liked a lot of the characters, particularly Jer, who is just kind of this like guy who's clearly trying to make things work. He clearly really cares about Vera and her family and wants to take care of her, wants to make sure that she is also okay in the society that is not going to be in her best interest. There are a couple things that I had questions about throughout the story, like why the hell are Chili's doing this, right? Why the hell are Chili's <laughs> outlawed? Um, Sinisalo does have a reason for that. It, it takes a while to get there, but she does have a reason. Um, <laughs> and kind of things along those lines. Um, but the underlying narrative, especially, I found very compelling. <laughs> Anyways, I will catch you guys later. I have to go and film my uh, Friday Reads video for you guys for tomorrow. And I will talk to you later. Bye.